We had a death in the family the other day, and I went to what to me was probably the second saddest funeral of my life. And because it was a family funeral, it put me in the canyon where my parents live. And all of my siblings were there. There were grandkids and nieces and nephews, and my parents were there. And it was a really happy time as far as us getting together and kind of catching up on each other's lives. And I stayed way, way, way too late in the evening because I had a flight to catch the next morning. And I was flying out about three and a half hours away, and I had to drive through dangerously through the canyon. So as I was driving through the canyon, I had all of the, the cards stacked against me, as they say. I was in a rental car, so it wasn't my car, not a car that I own, and it was a car that I was unfamiliar with. So that was a, a, a car to stack against me, if you will. I was driving in an area that I was unfamiliar with and I didn't know the roads, but I do know that they are really windy, curvy, mountainous roads where if you're not paying really close attention, you can run right off the side of a cliff, right? The next thing that I had against me was the weather. These are snow-capped mountains and the roads were bad. And as I started driving out of the canyon, it started snowing. And so I, I don't drive in snow. I live in North Carolina where we very rarely ever have snow. OK, so what happened to me was instead of me being in my comfort zone saying, hey, oh, yes, I totally got this. A whole bunch of things were against me on this particular drive back to the airport. One of the things against me that it's completely my fault. But one of those things was I was going from Pacific Standard Time to Mountain Standard Time. And I forgot to factor that into my drive. So as I'm driving, I realize about halfway through the drive. Oh, wait a second. I have an hour less than I thought I had to make this flight. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I really put myself behind the gun, right? Speaking of guns, I did not carry my, my protection with me on this flight because I would have to check it. And now I find myself on this windy, curvy, mountainous road in an area I don't know. And I've got a three and a half hour drive and I don't have any personal protection with me. And it wasn't, I wasn't carrying my firearm with me. So now I'm, I'm hoping I don't break down. I'm hoping that there's no danger along the journey right? Another thing that I had going against me for this particular um, situation, I had stayed up way too late the night before visiting with my family. And now I was leaving and it was 1.30 in the morning and my flight was at 5.30 in the morning flying out of Boise, Idaho. And so now I stayed up way too late and I'm really tired, right? And so I find myself saying, wow, I've I've made a really a bunch of really silly moves here in that I'm I'm now making this trek knowingly that I have all these dangerous elements against me. The last dangerous element for me was the fact that there's this 50 mile gap from where my parents live to the nearest town where there's no cell phone service. So if for any reason I do get in a bind or the car breaks down or whatever, I'm I'm hoping for the kindness of safe strangers to bail me out. Right. It's a whole bunch of things against me. The reason I tell you the story is not to go like, woohoo, I, I arrived safely, <laughs> which I did because here I am. But to share with you that as we look around our lives, sometimes there are things to us that we know are not the best environments for us, right? We're making decisions based on, oh, wait a second, all the cards are stacked against me right now. And in our, our situation of life where we have clutter and we have hoarding issues and we're dealing with families who have hoarding and clutter issues, whether they're our own or whether they're customers of ours, whether they're friends of ours, there might be neighbors, it might be relatives, who knows what. But we find ourselves in situations where all the cards are stacked against us. And if we are not on high alert and we are not super careful about every single move that we make, things could go disastrously wrong. OK, and the reason I share this story with you is because as I was on this road trip and I was knowingly going on this road trip, knowing I got to be really super careful on this one. OK, do not do not settle into your comfort zone. Comfort zone for me is like, oh, I'm driving along and I'm nice and warm and toasty in this car and I'm now falling asleep because I haven't really slept in two days. That's my comfort zone. That comfort zone equals death in this situation. I run right off the side of a cliff. Boom, life is over right? So it had really severe consequences for me. So I found myself doing things outside my comfort zone that I never do. For example, it's the middle of the dead winter. I'm not great on icy roads. 
but I pulled over to the side of the road several times and I got out of the car and I ran as fast around the car as I could a couple of times just to kind of like wake me up again. And I'm like, whoa, that's cold. Yes, okay, I'm awake now. I can go again for a little bit. And I cranked the radio up. I normally listen to podcasts, which is my comfort zone, but a soothing voice of a podcast is gonna send me right over the edge of a cliff. Right. So no podcast. I got to listen to like rock and roll music and, you know, dance in the car and I got to keep going. And and I actually had some caffeine. I don't usually have caffeine because caffeine I reserve for moments like this where I really need it. Right. If I took it every day, that puts me into adrenal fatigue. And then when I really need it, there's there's nothing to back that up. So I try to reserve it for these moments where I make some stupid, crazy move, like I'm driving through a windy canyon road in the middle of the night. And then I, it, it actually works. It's effective for me. So I had some caffeine. I'm running around the car in the wintertime. I'm rolling the windows down. Like every few minutes, I'd be rolling the windows down. And it's just freezing cold. And uh, I had the silly coat on. I mean, I, I don't live where it's cold. I didn't even have a real coat with me. So heaven forbid I should break down and things should happen, right? All right, the reason, the reason that we're talking about this today is because that we, as we look at life of clutter and uh, overwhelm, and busyness in our homes there's a moment where i'm going to ask you to do something that we rarely ask people to do i'm going to ask you to please be willing to live outside your comfort zone okay we've been doing a series of clutter and clutter removal and it's easy to say oh let me just go ahead and get rid of some stuff but we've had to have a couple of really difficult conversations and this is one of those, okay? This is a difficult conversation because what we're talking today is not about clutter, but it's about the mind-body connection of clutter and how the mind-body connection affects the clutter in your home. So if we were to go back to the root and we were able to actually fix some of those mind-body connections, then all of a sudden the clutter starts taking care of itself. Now, I don't wanna say the clutter is an easy fix, Okay, because we hang on to things for a variety of different reasons. And there's a lot of emotional attachment. There's money attachment. There are uh, family and relationships that have been built and ruined around stuff. So the stuff in our lives is, it can be all consuming. And when we get into a rut or we get into a comfort zone, what happens is we tend to keep operating in that because it's uncomfortable to get out of that zone. So what I want to share with you today, based on this particular scenario last weekend was every decision I made was uncomfortable for me. And I was on high alert, like, you know what, I have to, I do not have a choice. If I'm going to make it safely to the airport and I'm going to make that flight going home, I have to be willing to be outside my comfort zone. Okay. So outside the comfort zone, what does that look like? And it looks different for every person because everybody's personal levels of comfort is different. Okay. So we're going to be talking about comfort zone and the mind body connection. But what does that look like? As a house cleaner of 30, now 32 years, uh, we just crossed the, the threshold for 32 years for me in the cleaning business. But 32 years in the cleaning business as a professional house cleaner going inside people's homes, we can look around people's homes and I can tell you how that person is feeling based on their home. And you say, how is that possible? Well, it's possible because our environment, the home that we live in, the space that we occupy is a reflection of what's going on inside of us. And it's a very interesting phenomenon when you stop to realize what and how that looks. All right, so this is the mind-body connection that we're talking about today. And I wanna share, with, share this with you as a really important element of it runs off me and it sticks on you. Now, this is, this is, not, <laughs> this is not a joke, but what this is, is this is what's happening inside me, what's happening in my mind, my body, my activities every day is going to be reflected in my home. So it runs off me and it sticks on you. Have you ever had a really mad mood and you come in contact with someone and all of a sudden they start mirroring your behavior and you're like, well, wait a second, I'm the one that's mad. Why are you acting mad at me? It runs off me and it sticks on you. Okay. So it runs off me in the house and it sticks on you in the house. In this picture, what we're looking at is we're looking at a person here in the middle of a room and this room is really cluttered. And as this person sits around in the cluttered room, it's not so much that the room is cluttered as much as it is that the person who's inside the room has experienced, I don't know, busyness. Um, they overwhelm at work. 
uh, they're tired when they get home at the end of the day. And so they just kind of chunk things wherever they go. And so if you look at what is going on inside a person's head, it will be very, very close to what's going on in the room around them. And this is not, this is not new. I'm not making this up. This is my own observations over 32 years working with thousands of families. And so when you go into a home and somebody's on top of the world and everything's going well, they seem to have enough energy that they can clean up, that they can tidy up, that they can hire somebody to come in and, and, and help them with the maintenance of their home. When people are down and they're not feeling good and they're feeling lethargic and sick and they've got ailments, it's reflected in their home. You've got towels hanging everywhere. You've got clothes that are kind of strewn about. You have books and papers and magazines that they were reading that they just didn't have the energy to put away. And so it's interesting, but you can go so far, so far, check this out, even as to go to a person's house plants and you look at the person's house plants and what do you see? The house plants are a reflection of the person who lives in the home. So my question to you is, do you have indoor house plants? And if you do, I'm going to ask you this question. If I go look at your house plants right now, is it going to tell me how you're doing? And this is kind of cool because as a house cleaner, I could go inside people's homes and I could see that their plants were drooping. They hadn't been watered in a while. And I can tell really quickly my homeowner that I'm at their house right now. They're a little bit stressed out. They're probably under rested and they probably really need some TLC in this home right now. Because if the plant is a reflection of their owner, this plant really needs a boost right now, as does the homeowner. And 10 times out of 10, that sounds really arrogant, but 10 times out of 10, we would be spot on the money, spot on the money with how the homeowner is feeling, looking at their plants, looking at their home, looking at their environment. Okay. So in today's challenge, when I ask you to please live outside your comfort zone, I'm going to ask you to go take a look around the rooms of your house with new eyes. I want you to take a look and say, wait a second, this is the space that I'm occupying. How does this reflect on me right now? Do I feel like this right now? Because it's really hard to feel fantastic and feel fit and energetic and on top of the world in a really sloppy house with stuff strewn about. And maybe that there's old food that's been left out. Maybe there are odd smells that are coming either from the bathroom or the kitchen or the garbage disposal or somewhere. When you feel fantastic, we tend to follow that through in other areas of our lives. We make our commitments. We have great friendships. We have, we have things that work out for us. And as a result of that, we do little things unconsciously that support that, oh yes, I'm on top of the world behavior. We wipe up after ourselves. We put the dishes in the dishwasher. We empty the dishwasher and put them away. We rotate the laundry. We do these things that are just like second nature because that's the new norm, right? But if we've let our norm kind of slide a little bit, and it, it can be triggered by anything, this is the important thing to realize. It doesn't mean if you live in a sloppy house that has stuff coming apart at the seams, it doesn't mean that you're broken. It doesn't mean that you're sick. It doesn't mean that you have a mental illness. What it means is something got out of control and that became the new norm, right? Maybe that wasn't always your norm. People haven't always lived this way. There are people that had perfectly, immaculately clean homes. And there was one incident in their life that triggered something. And then their house kind of fell into disarray. And because it was in disarray and they felt bad for a period of time, that became the new norm. That became the comfort zone. And so without challenging that comfort zone, going, wait a second, I got to be on high alert right now, right? My life depends on me being on high alert right now. And so what does high alert look like? What are you doing right now that you can change slightly and live slightly outside your comfort zone until you recreate that new norm? I don't want to come into any of your homes and see that you have droopy plants and see that your homes are in disarray because something happened and that's your comfort zone and you got stuck. I don't want you to get stuck in your comfort zone if that's it. I want you to get out of the comfort zone. I want you to go, hey, you know what? I matter. I matter. If you followed us the last couple of weeks on the Hoarding World channel, what you have discovered is that we've had some really tough conversations. We've had a conversation about trusting ourselves. What does that look like? Do I trust myself enough to make some really tough decisions and to be vulnerable and to challenge the friendships that I'm in and to challenge the beliefs that I've, I've been using as crutches to kind of get me from point A to point B? Do I, do I really, am, am I trapped in a comfort zone or am I, am I okay to get out? 
And the good news is this, we're in an era right now, I'm giving you total permission to get out of the comfort zone because I want you, I want you, I want you, this is me, Angela Brown, I want you to have a safe place to live. Everybody deserves a safe place to live and everybody deserves a clean place to live. And it totally renovates your ideas and your belief system once you get into that hub where you're like, oh yes, yes, I'm, I'm in a safe space and I love coming home. Instead of saying, I can't wait to get away from home because I don't like it here. What happens if you were like, yes, I get to come home. I get to hang out at my house because I love being there. What a fun place to be. But that's not going to start. Here's the catch. It's not going to start with removing clutter. It's going to start first with the mind body connection. Okay. So once we fix this part, then the stuff around us is going to start fixing itself. So every day people contact me and they're like, I'm so overwhelmed. Where do I start? Okay. I don't want you to be overwhelmed. Okay. What I want us to do is remove the overwhelm until you have all the energy and you feel fantastic. And you're like, oh, sure. No problem. I got this. I can do this. Right. This is not, this is not hard stuff to pick up a towel and to hang it up. That is not hard stuff to put some clothing in the hamper or to run a load of laundry. That is not hard stuff. Okay. And so when you say, I don't know where to start, what we're, what we're dealing with is we've let everything get out of control. And like that guy in the very beginning, I showed you that's just in a house full of stuff. It is overwhelming because that's what's going on in here. Right? So we want to get what's going on in here first and we want to fix that. Now there are a couple of things and I want you to feel like this. This is what I want you to feel like it runs off me and it sticks on you. What I'm hoping in this moment is I'm hoping that when it runs off me and it sticks on you, that this is how you feel. And I have to stop for just a second here because I have a whole bunch of you guys that have just showed up and I want to say, hi, I'm super excited that all of you are here. Uh, J203 says, good morning. Uh, also, what can you recommend for removing water spots in the ceiling? I, I'm going to answer that and I'll actually make you a whole YouTube video on that because that's that's awesome. And that's going to also come into play if you ever try to sell your home. Uh, Judy says, do you have tips on removing hard water deposits from granite? Uh, you know what? This is awesome. I'm going to make I'll make you a video on that as well. Um, I'm hoping that Rita is on this call with me and Rita, let's make notes so that we can get these questions answered. And I'll show you my secret solutions to these. Right because I do want to answer all of these, but today I want to hang on to the mind body connection thing. Uh, Angela says, hi, Angela. I'm glad I'm here as a housekeeper. I clean houses every day. Yes. And thank you so much. Thank you to all of our house cleaners who are joining us today on this call. This is not typically a show we do on this channel. And I'm super excited that we are because there are a lot of professional house cleaners that we work with on a day-to-day -day basis that are inside people's homes dealing with these exact same issues. Okay. So whether it's you, whether you're helping a customer, whether you're helping a family member, this is super important. Uh, Joan says, I'm glad you're safe. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm glad I'm safe too. I was praying a lot. I was running around the car a lot. I was drinking uh, lemon water that my sister sent me so that I would stay awake and it was really sour. And so it was, it was helpful to stay awake. Um, I, yeah, it was a tough drive out of the Canyon and thank goodness I made it. Um, Angela also says I clean houses every day, vacuum dusting, but I have so much clutter in my home. And then goes on to say that she's still frustrated. Um, and thank you so much for your kind words. We are we are going to answer that today with this mind body connection thing. And and I love this. We've got uh, Alan here. Hi, Alan. How you doing? Good to see you again. Uh, Richard says, Hi, Angela. Would you say this correlates to the Eastern studies from Feng Shui? Feng Shui? Uh, yes, I would. And I don't want to put a name on it, saying it's 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 woo woo. Um, there are different beliefs and different philosophies, but what this comes down to is three things, three things that I cannot deny that I've been able to prove day after day, after day, after day for the last 32 years. Okay. So this is my own empirical wisdom. This is my own experience. Um, I want to, I want to say, we've got a whole bunch of people that have said, hi, I want to say hi to all of you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, when I look at the mind body connection. One of the things that I cannot, I cannot deny, and this is, this is proof in the pudding. There are three things we cannot outsource and it doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how rich you are. It doesn't matter how many hours in the week you think you have. We all only have 168 hours in the week. Okay. So it doesn't matter how rich or how poor you are. There are three things you cannot outsource and that is physical exercise. That is the food that you eat. And that is the sleep that you get at night. 
Okay. When I talk about getting out of your comfort zone, what I'm talking about are these three things specifically. The reason I bring it up is because movement encourages movement. And so if you are in a rut and if you're like, I just don't have the energy, I'm just so tired. I just, I always feel lethargic. My first suggestion to you based on experience, based on proof day after day, after day, after day is to get out and exercise. And you're like, I don't have the energy to exercise. That's exactly why you should do it. Because what happens is like our lymphatic system doesn't have a pump. It's not like the heart where it pumps itself. There's no pump. Okay. So you have to get out and you actually have to have movement in order for your lymphatic system, which helps your immune system work properly. You got to get out and kickstart it. And so what does that look like? And it's movement. You got to, you got to move. And so I'm going to recommend that you get up every single day, even if you don't want to, even if it's cold outside, even if it's hot outside, I don't, I don't care what the weather is bundle up or put, you know, a little tankini on like this and, and get out and, and get going, get going, whether you walk or whether you're, you're running, but you've got to get some circulation going through your body. And what happens is maybe for four or five days, you're going to go like, whoa, this is kind of tough and I'm out of my comfort zone. And then after four or five days, your body's going to start waking you up naturally. You're not even going to need an alarm. Your body's going to go, hey, it's time for you to get out and, and move, right? Movement encourages movement. So if you do not have movement in your life and you're not feeling very good, get out and move. Lots of people say, well, I can't move. There are certain things I can't do. What can you do? And one of my encouragements is, can you get like a little mini trampoline? Even if it's too cold and you can't get out and it's icy where you live, can you get a little mini trampoline with one of those support bars? Can you put that in front of the TV and can you bounce? Because if you can bounce, how long can you bounce? Can you bounce for a few minutes in front of the TV? That's movement. That's going to get your lymphatic system going again, right? And that's going to jumpstart your body and your blood and the oxygen going through your brain. Not only that, but check this out. It's also, and I'm talking about the, the mini trampoline, it's also great for your core, which is everything from here all the way down to about your knees, okay? It's going to help your butt. It's going to help your thighs. It's going to help your quads. It's going to help your stomach. It's going to help all of your body and all of your organs. And it's very inexpensive to do that. So even if you don't have a pair of running shoes and you're not willing to go outside, you can bounce. There are things you can do, but energy comes from energy. Okay. And it doesn't matter, like I said, how much you pay, you can pay for a personal trainer and you can buy a gym membership, but unless you actually do the work, you're not going to benefit from it. And no one can do it for you. No one can go work out for you and you get the benefits. It doesn't work that way. Okay. So you have to do it yourself. You have to be willing to do it yourself. So if you're going to go walking, even if it's cold outside, bundle up and walk like you are late for an appointment. I'm not kidding, like wander along and just kind of, you know, take a little morning stroll. I'm talking about you get out there and you power walk, give it everything you've got. And it doesn't cost anything. It's absolutely free. And if you're having a hard time, find a friend. Okay. In my neighborhood, I don't do a lot of social activities because I'm really busy. But in my neighborhood, there was somebody that wanted to be my friend. And she said, I will meet you at seven o'clock on a Saturday morning and we can go walk around the neighborhood. And I thought, oh my goodness, this woman wants to be my friend badly enough that she'll get up at seven o'clock in the morning, put on a hat and a coat, and we'll go walking in the neighborhood. Totally, I will do that, right? It's great exercise for me. It's great socialization and it's great therapy, right? You get to spin ideas off other people. So when we talk about the mind body connection, maybe what you need is a good friend that can kind of like, you know, answer questions and hang out with you and help you work through issues. And you can do that while you're walking. You don't have to stop and take extra time. You can do it while you're walking, right? So this is a really great opportunity to get out of your comfort zone. All right. And I, I, I mentioned this because, like I said, it's absolutely free, but you're going to have to be willing to do the hard stuff. If you're willing to do the hard stuff, guess what? You do benefit from it. You do get the benefits of the extra oxygen, the endorphins, feeling fantastic. And now you go home and then what? You slip back into the way you live? No. You come home and you're like, man, I feel fantastic. I should do something while I'm feeling fantastic. And that's where I say the clutter starts to take care of itself. You're like, I could totally do a load of laundry right now. I could totally do a load of dishes. And it might not be much, but it's something because you're willing to kick yourself out of your comfort zone, right? All right. How far can you stretch that step? Maybe you're like me and you like to challenge yourself. But if there's no challenge, like, what am I doing this for? 
So for me, it's like, how far can I stretch my stride? And I start running. The faster you run, the longer that stride goes. You know that? And so I've got about a six foot gap. Every time my foot hits the pavement, it's like six feet later. And then you say, how many times can I get from here to that telephone pole? And how many steps? Every day, try to get there in one less step. And that's, you're stretching your stride a little bit farther. And what that means is you're going a little bit faster as you run, right? Ah, it's a trick. I tricked you to make you go faster, but it's a little game that you play with yourself. So even if this is not your comfort zone and today you're just walking, the day may come where you're like, you know what? I feel kind of good today. I think I'm going to try to run from here to that telephone pole. You know what? Nobody's stopping you. Give it everything you got, right? And so then the next day you're going to go, I, I, I could go to two telephone poles. Great. See if you can run from one telephone pole to the next, then walk from one to the next, and then run from one to the next. See how far you can go and how many little tiny mini runs you can fit inside a regular little walk or a jog. Because what happens is the faster you go and the more aerobic uh, stuff that you have going through you, that's going to start processing even quicker. The endorphins come faster. It processes, you know, fat in your body. It has jump starts your metabolism. It helps build your immune system. There are so many health benefits and they're all free. If you got a good pair of running shoes, get out and go. There's nobody stopping you. And again, you are the only person that benefits from that. All right, the next one. How long can you bounce in front of the TV? We talked about this. I have a mini trampoline inside my house. And the cool part about it is I've got one inside my office and I have one inside my, my TV room where we do watch TV at night. And the reason I bring this up is because I can sit in front of the TV like anyone else. And it's fun to just eat food and stuff in front of the TV. But if my goal to myself is I got to jump for 30 minutes before I sit down, what I know about myself is this. I'm going to get a really good little workout where my blood's going to get going and all right, I can do this and I'm going to feel it the next day. That exercise is going to help me sleep better at night and then the next day I'm going to have a better day because my body is already operational. And so instead of waking up feeling like, oh, I just I feel like I just got hit by a truck. I'm so exhausted. I'm going to wake up going like, wow, hey, I'm ready to start the day, right? As a house cleaner. I need my energy. That's one of the highest values that I bring to the table as a house cleaner because I have to clean every single day and that's a lot of movement and a lot of momentum. And when we said energy encourages energy or movement encourages movement, I'm counting on that in order to get through the day. If I start my day and I'm exhausted and then I go clean all day and then I come home and I'm super exhausted because you are at the end of the day, you're whipped. If I come home at the end of the day and I just crash, then, you know, good for me. I got some rest, but then the next day I'm starting again from a deficit. So somewhere along the day, and I've done this every year, as long as I've been in the cleaning business, I got to work out at least somewhere during the day, either first thing in the morning or after my, 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 my schedule is done for the day in order that I can get through the following day. Okay, because our energy builds on top day by day. And the stronger you get and the stronger your muscles are, the, the more energy you have. Okay, so how long are you bouncing? Again, it's not very expensive to buy one of these little mini trampolines. And I've left links in the notes below so that you guys can get one if you don't have one. I have two in my house. There are times I've had four. And then employees cart them off. They're like, I need one of those. I'm like, okay, go with you. I have two or I have three. Um, but, but before, several times during the day, even if I'm working out of my house or it's the weekend, if I'm going from one room to the other, I will jump on that just for a few minutes. It doesn't have to be long. It can be as little as 30 seconds to keep your heart rate going and, and keep you going. And that can replace a whole cup of coffee. Check this out. Instead of the coffee, which stresses your adrenal glands and it gives you less power over, you know, getting your energy back, this is a natural boost. And so if nothing else, man, I'm a little tired. I think I'll just jump for a few minutes and you're right back to where you were. Okay, so it's completely natural, no side effects. All right, with that, um, there are things that we can do. This one is one of my favorites. It is in front of the microwave. And I know many people heat up their food. Uh, if you are waiting in front of the microwave and you have to, I don't know, wait for two or three minutes, what are you doing in front of the microwave instead of just standing there? And the reason I say that is because if you'll stretch your arms out and you do like these little arm circles, you can do a series of arm circles while you're waiting for your food to cook. Also, if you will keep like uh, stretch bands and you'll keep them right in front of the microwave, 
you can just do some arm stretches right now, which is great therapy for your shoulders, okay? Lots of house cleaners have shoulder aches because they do lots of arm movement with the vacuum and they're moving their hands like in circular motions or back and forth motions while they're cleaning. And so their arms will take a beating and they're like, man, I got like cramps in my shoulders, the neck, the shoulders, you can work all that out with stretch bands. Okay. And you can hold one end and you can stretch with one hand. The reason I bring this up is because if you'll keep the stretch bands close to the TV and close to the microwave, and if you'll keep a set inside your car, I've got links in the show notes to those as well. Any free time that you have, you can be stretching those. You can do overhead stretches. You can do stretches in front of you. You can hold part of it and stretch where it will then work your whole arm. Lots of stretches with just a stretch band. Now I'll share a secret with you. If you ever have like a shoulder replacement and you go through physical therapy, the first thing they're going to do, they're going to give you stretch bands. So you can avoid the the shoulder replacement and all that stuff by keeping your shoulders strong to begin with. <laughs> Yay. All right. Um, we've got lots of people here with comments. Uh, Space Cadet says, uh, your idea of decluttering our lives at Mind Body Connection is wonderful. But Angela, does that mean I finally have to shave and take that long overdue monthly shower? Um, if that's out of your comfort zone, I'm going to say yes, because you deserve a shower. You deserve a shower every day. And so if, if that's new for you, yes, do it for yourself, if for nothing else. Colleen says, I just found your video. You're speaking to me today. Kind of scary, but I think I need you. You know what? I'm speaking to all of us. We all need this, including me, right? So thank you so much for joining us. We're all in this together. I wish I could say there's this isolated group of people that are dealing with clutter and, and hoarding and stuff. It's now everybody. It's everybody. Scary rooms, storage units, um, garages, attics closets. Everybody's got some little place where they just chunk stuff. It could be drawers. It could be dressers. It could be who knows what, but there, it, it's all of us now. There's nobody that's special. That's like, oh, it, it's just me. I, I have clutter issues. Everybody does, you know? So yeah, we're all dealing with this together. Um, Eileen, how you doing? Good to see you. Uh, we've got Richard here. Uh, came, uh, came here for cleaning advice. I'm going to leave with a powerful spiritual advice. Um, thank you so much. This is, a, this is not so much spiritual, I mean, it can be, but it is, it is as much about our lives and, and respecting ourselves. And the reason I bring this up is because I just said a minute ago how you deserve to live in a clean house. You deserve to have a healthy body and you deserve to live a life that you were meant to live. And you can't live it if you've fallen into the comfort zone or you've fallen into a rut. Okay. You can't live that life if you don't have the energy to live it. And so that's the series of conversations we've been having building up to today. And today is that really tough conversation. Like, you know what? You're responsible. It's you. I'm looking at you. You're the one that's responsible. Yeah. And it's, it's everybody realizing for themselves, taking responsibility on their own, that this is my life. I deserve, I deserve a healthy life. I deserve to get a good night's sleep. I deserve to exercise. And lots of people go, I don't have time to exercise. I've got family, I've got kids. Da, 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 da. You know what? That's exactly why you should take time to exercise. You deserve it. This is your life and we only get one round. And so if this is the round that we're getting, let's make the most of it, right? Let's make the most of the life that we live so that we can hold our heads proud and we can go, oh yeah, yeah, this is, this is my life and I'm giving it every single thing I've got. Sleep. Sleep reboots the body and the brain. Now, I know I'm preaching to the choir when I talk about sleep. There are so many people that would love to just sleep and sleep and sleep. And then they toss and turn. And why? Because they're business owners. No, I'm just kidding. But as business owners, if you're like me, you probably wake up halfway through the night and you're thinking about employees and you're thinking about, oh no, I've got payroll coming up. And you're thinking about difficult customers that you're working with. Sometimes people are just flustered with kids they're flustered with teenagers. They might be angry or, or disconnected from their spouse. There are all these things that keep us awake at night and it just kind of bottles up and it just kind of makes us stressful, right? And then you try to go have a productive day and feel on top of the world. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Sleep is one of those things you cannot outsource. You got to have a really good night's sleep. So much, so much that the iPhone now has a sleep alarm on it. If you go to the health section of your iPhone, it will say, tell me when you want to go to bed at night. 
How many hours of sleep do you want to get? And it will start winding down and it will start zoning out your phone and it won't show you the ads and all this stuff at nighttime. It's going to start closing down. And as you start to go online late at night, it's going to remind you, you know, it's past your bedtime. You need to go to bed now. And it will start shutting down your apps because you're going to bed now and it's not going to wake you up until you get up in the morning. Right. So, I mean, everybody knows that sleep is really important. Now, I'm not making this up because everything that we're going to do tomorrow is dependent on the sleep we got last night and the night before. It actually works in like 48 hour cycles. So the sleep we got two nights ago actually is going to affect me today. And the sleep that I get last night is also going to affect me today. So how well did you sleep at night and how many hours are you giving yourself? The reason I say that is because there are little tiny things that we do during the day that affect our sleep patterns. And I want to make sure that you know what they are so that then you have choices, right? And I'm going to ask you again, are you willing, will you follow me on this journey? And will you live outside your comfort zone? Because you're going to have to do a couple of things that are going to change. One of them is, can you get sunlight every single day? And you don't think that applies to sleep. It does. We need at least 30 minutes of sunlight a day. So if you have the chance to open your windows and open your blinds, let some sunlight in so that you get the, the vitamin K or whatever it is that your body needs, please get that. Okay. Make sure that you're getting some sunlight because that will affect the serotonin levels and the melatonin and all that stuff. So that when you go to sleep at night, you sleep soundly. It's part of the brain processing properly is by getting sunlight. So if you don't have enough sunlight in your day, get out and get some. And so even if you're like me and you go running when it's pitch dark outside, make sure that at least you have the windows open during the day that you get some sunlight, even if it's driving from job to job, but make sure you get some sunlight as part of your daily everyday activity because it does affect your sleep at night. All right. So the next one is nicotine and caffeine. And I know for a lot of people, this is a great big staple in their diet. Either they're smoking or they're drinking lots of coffee or things like that. <coughs> Excuse me. But the, uh, the nicotine and the caffeine are going to give you a false sense of that um, activity and, and action. Okay. And so what happens is that does really put stress levels on your body to the point where we had, uh, we had somebody in our, in our network that was doing five, five, five Red Bulls a day just to try to get through the, the day and just stay awake. And then there was another woman that was doing 20, 22 cups of coffee. Okay. So now the adrenals are just maxed out and they're not performing at all. And then you're so tired and there's, there's nothing to get you back up again. Okay. So if you go off the caffeine and you go off the nicotine, what that's going to do is force your body to start reproducing that on its own. But if you're falsely producing it, your body's not going to, it's not going to try to produce that because it's going to say my body already has enough of that. Right. And it's not going to produce that on its own. So try to get off of that as much as possible. And we do it by cutting in half. So if you smoke two today, smoke one tomorrow, then smoke a half of one and then don't smoke at all. If you drink three cups of coffee, drink one and a half and then drink, just break it down in half, 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 half and a half until you're completely off. That's the way that we wean ourselves off of that. But then go off of that and save the caffeine for moments where like you're driving dangerously through a canyon road or something, right? Then it actually works and you're like, whoa, wait a second, what was that, right? It was more than your body was producing because you, it, it's not your norm, right? So avoid caffeine and nicotine if at all possible, because your body is going to start producing then natural energy. And that's what we want to get to is get away from artificial energies and get into natural energies. I cannot expect you to clean your house and I cannot expect you to declutter and I cannot expect you to clean up a hoarding situation if you don't have enough energy to do the job. Okay. It's, it's going to be really tough if every time you walk into a room, you're like, oh, I just can't. I'm so exhausted. And if that's how you're feeling, then we have to address that at a mind body level, right? That's what's happening here. It falls off me and it sticks on you, right? If it's stuck all over your house, we got to fix that. Okay. Outside our comfort zone. All right. I'd love this. This is just so much fun. Uh, we got a nap. If you're going to nap and I'm a big fan of naps and my naps are not as long as I wish they were. My naps are somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes at most. If I do get a nap, but avoid taking a nap within six hours of going to bed at night, because if you're within that six hour window, chances are you're probably not going to go to bed on time. 
you're probably going to stay up and you're going to be wide awake at like two or three o'clock in the morning <laughs> because your body then kind of like reset itself, right? And it does. The nap and the sleeping, it resets your body and brain. Now, I'm in a business where right now we're doing lots of YouTube videos. We're creating lots of content and courses and stuff like that. My brain is on high mind. I call it mind meld where I need a lot of brain power every day. And there are days it'll be like three, four o'clock in the afternoon. And I, I've given my brain everything I have for the day. There's nothing left. And I'm like, man, I need a nap. And it might not be a, a long nap. It might be 15 minutes or so, but it kind of resets everything and I'm ready to go again for another eight hours. So make sure that you're not sleeping within a six hour window of your bedtime. Don't be trying to take a nap at, you know, six, seven, eight o'clock at night. That's, that's not going to help you in any way. All right. The next thing that I want to um, bring to our attention is the food that we eat. This is not something that you can pay someone else to do. You can pay for food to be delivered to your house. You can pay for a chef to come to your house. You can drive through the drive through and you can buy food that you yourself didn't have to cook. But when we talk about food, um, I want to talk about how not eating a great big meal within three hours of your bedtime is, again, it's going to affect you personally. Okay. So this is really all about you and how, how are you managing these little moments in your life so that you're maximizing your sleep on a regular basis and the food that we eat, please do not eat a great big meal with all kinds of spicy stuff right before you go to bed at night. Cause that is going to keep you up all night. Right. And I don't want, I don't want that to happen to you. So we have to start thinking in terms of, wait a second, I have a big meal coming up. Let's eat that at three o'clock, four o'clock in the afternoon and maybe have a light snack before bed, not eating the big meals, right? The big meals will keep you up during the night. I also want to avoid uh, big workouts before bedtime. Do you remember how we talked about the uh, energy encourages energy? I did this one night. Um, I, I got really, I got going on the little mini tramp. <laughs> And it was kind of late and I was like, oh, I haven't got it in yet. I'm going to hurry in, you know, and I started jumping and I felt really great. So I'm like, hey, I'll go a little bit further. And then I felt really great. Okay, I'll go a little bit further. And then lo and behold, it came time to go to bed and I was wide awake. I mean, I was like, I was ready to go. Okay, don't do that because then you're not going to get a good night's sleep, right? So it's a management of the food that you eat, when you eat the food, the kinds of food that you eat, the exercise that you get during the day the sunlight that you get during the day really already probably some of you are like hey i'm out of my comfort zone already right i know that if i'm not doing this series of little tiny things i can get out of whack really quick as well speaking of getting out of whack i gotta say hi to you guys i've got so many people here that have jumped in to say hi space cadet says my plants are perfectly healthy but i'm motivated to restart that late life removal process we do become comfortable with our environment it's a bit it's a bit hard like throwing her out in a way. Yeah, you know what? It's a uh, it, it it's something to think about. And so even if you've been really keen on having a certain lifestyle, we do have to stop and realize that we have a choice with every day. And uh, uh, low key low key says, "Hey, good afternoon. I just tuned in. I needed to see this. Thank you. You know what? Thank you for tuning in today. Um, I'm really glad that you guys are here." We've got so many folks here. Uh, Sylvana 63 says, thank you kindly, Angela. Angela. Uh, Giorgio says, hi. Um, how do I say this? Moki Girl says, I sell vintage things on eBay and I have so much stuff in piles around my house. It's so overwhelming. It can be. It can be. I, and you're not alone. Lots and lots of people are going through this. Jin J says, hi. And I, I love all the little happy eyes. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Um, Schwarzerman. I'm sure all these names are super important and they mean something. I'm dealing with hoarding. Would it be wise to hire a professional cleaner to help me? Um, not yet. Not yet. Um, again, I want us to get out of our comfort zone because before you hire a cleaner, and the reason I say this is if we just hire a cleaner to come in, but we haven't actually changed the behavior habits of us getting out of our comfort zone, what's going to happen is they'll clean our house. And because the mind body connection hasn't changed we go right back to the way that it was and within a matter of a couple of weeks we'll be right back where we were and we will have spent a whole bunch of money and we won't have any new systems in place right so if we fix this part first like i said the other stuff starts fixing itself and there will things that right now are overwhelming that then will become like second nature and we'll be like oh yes but of course right that's that's second nature to me 
So when I talk about the things that you cannot outsource, one of the things that I want to bring up is premium fuel. And I say premium fuel because as a house cleaner, I've been inside people's homes all day, every day. And if I work out first and then I go clean houses for six or seven or eight hours a day, and then in the evening, I'm expected to still you know, perform for my own family, which is ever fixing dinner or cleaning my own house or getting tomorrow's cleaning supplies ready or any of those things. I have to be my best version of myself. And so I remember reading one time, someone said, you can't expect a million dollar body if you're eating off the dollar menu. And I was like, whoa, wait a second. And I was, I was going through the drive through and I was eating the quickest, fastest stuff that I could find because I hadn't prepared my food. And then I said, wait a second, what would it look like? And this goes back to getting out of your comfort zone. What would it look like if you did take responsibility for the food that you ate? Again, I can pay somebody to, to send meals to me, but I can't pay for the digestion and, and experiencing the nutritional value unless I actually eat it. So while the drive through may have some healthy choices, if I don't order those healthy choices and I just order the fun stuff and I say fun stuff, uh, if I, this is a, a highly processed meal. If you look at this, this is just a box of cereal. And if I look at that, there's not anything really healthy there. It's just chemicals, right? Are you just eating chemicals or are you eating real food? And if you're ordering from the dollar menu and this is your breakfast, lunch, and or dinner, what kind of nutritional value are you actually getting from that? And I don't, I don't want to nitpick and I don't want to, I don't want to point any fingers but as a house cleaner, one of the, the biggest fears that I had was because I was in a hurry, because I'm racing from house to house, because I'm burning so much fuel. For years, I thought, well, I can eat whatever I want and it won't affect me. But the reality is, if I have a really expensive car and I put water in the gas tank, what happens? Well, it putters to a stop. And so if you are putting icky fuel inside your body and your body is your biggest, best machine that thinks it's better than any AI tool you've ever seen, it can think and reason, it has emotions, it can help people, it can you know, pivot and make maneuvers to, to do other things. How on earth do you think that's going to respond if you're giving it icky fuel? And so for me, this is me personally, after being in the industry for so many years, where my energy, my physical energy, my mind-body connection was so at risk every single day. What I had to do for myself, and I did this as a survival tool for myself, I switched to, and this is my lunch for the day, I switched to eight ounce containers. And I love these eight ounce containers. These are green grapes. This has a screw on lid. So I can put all kinds of things in here and screw on the lid. And then what happens is it doesn't leak if it's, if it's a liquid. I can take it with me in a lunchbox. I prefer to have whole foods because this doesn't need to be refrigerated. I can put this inside the cup holder of my car. Then I'm driving from house to house and I get a little bit hungry. Instead of going through a drive through I'm like, hey, I got healthy snacks right here. This is real energy right here. This is not from the dollar menu. And it doesn't cost a lot. I can get a great big bag of grapes for a dollar or two, just the same as I could get something off the dollar menu. But the, the grapes will last me all week for snacks. And so this is a great in-between house snack. I've left links in the show notes to these as well with the, uh, the little containers. I swear by these containers because what happens is I can get a great big crock pot and I can put things like yams in there or I can put chicken in there and I can make little tiny meals like this that then go in the freezer. And then when I do get home and I'm throwing something in the microwave for my dinner, what I'm throwing in there is actual whole foods. I'm not eating highly processed foods that have sugar and additives and all these things in there that are going to like bog my system down and my system is going to have to fight for survival, right? I want to eat something that just processes and is like, hey, thank you very much, right? Here's my, my late lunch snack and this is just an apple. And what, what I've done is I've taken this uh, apple slicer and I love this apple slicer because it has like a little thing on the back that pops the apple out. So I can use the apple. The whole apple fits inside this little container and I leave the core in here until it's time to eat. And I just pull the core out like that. See, my apple is right there in the middle. And that way it keeps my apple from turning brown. So I can carry my apples with me during the day. So I can keep an apple, which is again, natural energy. I can carry my grapes with me, which is natural energy. And I can have these. These don't need to be refrigerated. They can go in a lunchbox, but they don't, you know, they can also go in a cleaning caddy if I need to eat a little something while I'm on the go. So if you will prepare your food 
and take it with you, then you're not tempted. Like, well, I haven't eaten anything. I'm so hungry. I have to go through and, and eat something off the dollar menu. You're not forced to do that because you took a couple extra minutes at the top of every day. Now, I'll share this with you. I work out of my house. And you say, Angela, that's so weird. Why do you have food in your house? It should be in my fridge, right? Well, here's the thing. Every morning when I get up, I fix breakfast, lunch, and dinner for everybody in my house. And they all go in their own individual lunch boxes, and I bring mine to my office with me. Now, even though I'm inside the house, instead of running to the refrigerator and keep hoping that new treats have appeared and, well, I haven't fixed anything, so I'll just eat whatever, what I'm doing is I'm forcing myself. I'm saying, these, these, this is my food for the day, right? I, too, have food. I deserve to have food as well. And because I've planned it and it's in front of me, <clears throat> it's not out of sight, out of mind. I'm not letting myself get into a deficit where I'm now so hungry that I can't eat healthy foods. I'm at a point where I'm like, hey, I'm hungry and I have food right here waiting for me. Like, hey, how cool is that? Right. And it's it's because I deserve that. You deserve that. You deserve to take care of yourself just like you take care of everyone else. We talked about this last week. We call it mom syndrome where we take care of everyone else and we put ourselves very last. And I'm asking you to get out of your comfort zone and reverse that. I'm asking you to take care of yourself first. Guess why? Because if you take care of yourself first and your energy is great and you feel fantastic and you've had plenty of sleep, I know, imagine you're healthy, you're vivacious, you have energy. How much better can you take care of everyone else from your kids to your spouse, to your, your elder parents, to your clients? It's amazing. Okay, you, you can do so much more by taking care of yourself first. And so it's not selfish and it's not arrogant to say, hey, you know, what? I'm going to like bring myself some lunch. It's not. You deserve that just like you deserve a clean home. And so before we just start cleaning our home, I'm asking you to clean your body. Get rid of all the gunk that's in your body. And I'll share a secret with you because many people are like, I don't know anything at all about nutrition. I don't know where to start. So my suggestion is this. I just showed you the processed foods and I showed you the dollar menu items, what do these two things have in common? Check it out. They're gold colored foods. What? Gold colored foods. It's true. I'm asking you to avoid gold colored foods just for a couple of days. You don't have to go all crazy and everything, but just avoid gold color foods and trade them out with foods that are green. And when I say foods that are green, these are foods, these are whole foods with nutrients in them. And the gold colored foods, for the most part, don't have nutrients in them, but the green colored foods do. How cool is that, right? It's like a magic trick. So when you have a choice, and the choice is to always eat the healthiest of the foods available to you. So if you go into, I don't know, any meal, and you see foods that are gold and foods that are green, choose the foods that are green, right? Your body will thank you. All right, so what kind of foods? Avocados. Yes, avocados are green and they're super healthy for you. What happens if you eat avocados every day, right? Your body will thank you. And what happens if you eat, this is a, a honeydew melon. So there are lots of fruits and vegetables that you can eat that are also green. But I want you to start thinking in terms of green. What are the green foods that we can be adding to our diet that can replace some of those gold colored foods that's nothing but processed chemicals? Apples. You can eat apples. They're super healthy for us. They've got lots of energy. They process quickly. It's they're, they're fun to eat. They taste great. You know what I mean? This is innocent, good, healthy, raw energy. And the more you eat it, the better your body will thank you. Grapes. I eat grapes almost every single day. It's like one of the coolest snacks ever. It tastes good. It's easy once I wash them off. I don't have any uh, garbage. There's no garbage left behind. There are no seeds I, I choose the seedless grapes, but there's nothing to spit out. There's nothing to throw away. There are no wrappers. It's just like that. Da, 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 easy to eat, right? And then for dinner, I was talking about the crock pot. You can throw things like squash in the crock pot and cook it. And it tastes absolutely delicious with no salt. You don't need any seasoning. You don't need any of that stuff. It's just really good, healthy food that tastes great, right? This is spinach. You can make a spinach salad and you can add all kinds of really fun stuff to it. My point is that if you're eating healthy foods, you're going to benefit from the healthy foods. But again, out of your comfort zone, because if you don't take care of your diet, and I say diet, your health plan, your eating plan, you're not going to benefit from all of the energy you could be getting. 
And there are a lot of foods that bring energy to us. So if you're out and you're doing movement every day and you're exercising and you're doing the anaerobic stuff and you're getting the blood circulating through your body and then you're eating things that bring you natural energy, you're going to feel fantastic. And then when you go to sleep at night, you're going to sleep so soundly. When you wake up in the morning, you're going to bounce out of bed like toast and you're going to go, oh my goodness, if you don't, don't I feel fantastic. All right, now let's go back to where what's on me runs off and it sticks on you. Okay. If what I'm feeling is I feel fantastic. I feel on top of the world. I've got all this energy. What's going to happen to the, the world around you? Are you going to forget to feed your plants? Are they going to be droopy and sad looking? No, you're going to walk by and go, whoa, you need some water. And you're going to recognize, you're going to be aware, you're going to be on top of the world. And you're going to recognize that there are people around you that need a hug people that need a conversation, people that need a little bit of something extra that you can provide, right? And the reason I'm bringing this up is because lots of people that are involved in hoarding situations are so overwhelmed and so consumed, they've forgotten the purpose of life. And they're so consumed with me and my little environment that they can't get outside and where they really need to be is outside helping other people. They need to be doing things that have purpose and meaning. They need to have hobbies that are fun, that are fulfilling, that make their life sing. They need to have relationships with people that are intriguing and interesting, people learning new things and sharing new ideas. But because they're so bogged down with how they feel and the environment that's around them, sometimes they can't even get out of that little comfort zone, okay? And so we've had some really tough conversations, but in this conversation, I want to ask you, is your life worth it? And the answer is yes, absolutely. That's why you're here, right? We all have a purpose in life. What is your purpose? And do you owe it to yourself to kind of get out of your comfort zone? It's like me driving dangerously through the windy mountainous roads, trying to get back to the airport. My goal was to get to the airport so I could fly home. But in order to do that, I had to go against every single thing in my comfort zone because all the cards were stacked against me and many of them self-inflicted. Okay. I'm the one that stayed up way too late past my bedtime. I'm the one that stayed longer in town than I should have. I'm the one that did all the things. Okay. I, I'm responsible for all of it, but most of us are as well. Most of us have stacked the deck against us. We're the ones that went, ran out and bought all the stuff. We went to the yard sales and the garage sales and all, we're the ones that bought all this stuff. We stacked the cards against ourselves. And now the moment has come where our lives may depend on it, right? And so I'm asking you, get out of your comfort zone and you do whatever it takes. Whether you've got to get out and run around the car and you've got to shake yourself up and sing loud music and dance and do all these things just to stay awake. you got to do whatever you got to do. And if that means you get up earlier than you're comfortable with in the morning, get up earlier. Throw on a pair of jogging shoes and get out the door. Yeah, if it's cold, put on a beanie hat and a coat and walk like you are in a hurry, like you are going someplace in a hurry, right? Get your body jump started again. You owe it to yourself and you owe it to all the people that know and love you, your family, your kids, your friends. You owe it to everybody. Life was meant to be lived, not to be survived. Are you surviving? Are you just kind of like going through the motions every day and you don't know why? That's not life. That's not living Living is about getting up and doing the things dangerously. I'm going to go for a big run today. I'm going to run from telephone pole to telephone pole. I got this. I'm going to do this. And then you get home and you do a load of dishes and you do a load of laundry. I mean, live dangerously. You even clean the bathroom if you feel like it, you know? And if you don't, that's fine. But work on this part first. Because if you work on this part first, the mind-body connection, the other stuff will start to fall into place. And I don't want you to beat yourself up and I don't want you to feel bad and lousy and shameful and all those things. We've decided already in the last few episodes that we did that that's kind of like old, old stuff. That's like yesterday's news, right? Feeling ashamed and not inviting people over and living in a life of clutter and woe is me. That's all like yesterday's stuff. We're so over that. We're not doing that anymore. We're going to say, what can I do? Well, I, I can eat a salad tonight. I can do that. Well, if that's all you have in front of you, you know what? Do that tonight. Go from gold to green. You can do that, right? And you just learned a new trick. It's like a magic trick. No gold, only eat green. Yay, it'll make you feel a whole lot better. All right, I have to stop here today. I respect your time. You guys, we're at the end of our time together. And I have so many people that have said hi. I do want to leave you with one thing before we leave. And I, I, I want to say hi here. I don't know if I've got any questions here. I got lots of cleaning questions. Uh, have you tried next door? That would be free. Don't know what that's about. 
uh, what's next door? Uh, next door is an app where you, it's a neighborhood app where you can jump on the neighborhood uh, app and you can actually ask for someone, any neighbors here that want to go walking with me in the morning that want to hold me accountable. It's a great way to do that. Um, there are many good exercise channels on YouTube. Yes, that's also true. Um, thank you guys for adding in the comments in here. I'm going to come back and answer these after this is over. I do want to leave you with one thing. And if you have not listened to this yet, um, I created this uh, for you guys, and it was back the day before Christmas. And this is a tape that you listen to when you go to sleep at night. It's called The New Normal. And if you haven't listened to it already, it will kind of play in the background of your, of your night while you're sleeping. Turn it on low, audible enough so that you can hear the words. But it's a series of affirmations, and it walks you through every single one of these steps. There are like 15 different areas of wellness. If you do nothing else, if you do nothing that we talked about today and you do nothing else, but you listen to this every single night when you go to sleep. I myself have been listening to it every night since it came out, which was the night before Christmas. And it's, it's phenomenal. And I say phenomenal because I've watched other people in my house also listening to it, starting to make some really serious changes in their lives, very easy, effortlessly and naturally. And so it, what it does is it starts changing the way that we talk to ourselves. We start thinking in terms of, oh, yes, that's a possibility for me. And then what happens is your unconscious mind starts to find scenarios in which this is true, where you go in, you're offered lots of different kinds of food and you choose the healthiest of the choices, where you leave a room and you tidy up after you leave. There are lots of little things there and you can listen to it while you're conscious and, and awake, but you can also listen to it every night as you sleep. It's set for eight hours. It will just play over and over and over again on a loop. And the cool part about it is, is what it does is it replaces the negative tapes we've been listening to, to say, hey, wait a second, I deserve something better. This is for me. So listen to it. I've left links in the show notes for you guys. It's 100% free. There are no side effects. There's nothing to do or buy. Just turn it on low. Listen to it as you go to sleep at night. All right. That's it for today. Um, thank you so much for your time. And I, I'm going to continue this conversation again this time next week over on the Hoarding World channel. So come join us if you haven't already. Uh, this was a special thing we, we added in our house cleaning group today because we have lots of house cleaners working through these issues. The rest of the stuff we're doing is over on the Hoarding World channel. So come visit us there. And again, uh, thank you for your time today. I, I love having you guys here. And like I said, I'll come back and I'll answer all your questions when I get the chance here later this evening. So until then, have a great week and I want you to feel great. Keep me posted because I'm, I'm here and 